This video is to answer a question of a viewer. Uh, I wanted to do a tutorial on this, and maybe I will. Let me explain. <laughs> I'm going to try to answer the question without giving a demonstration because the demonstration is too much work. I would love to do some videos on the Windows operating system. Not because I like using Windows, but because there are times where you're going to have to use the Windows operating system. You're somewhere and you want to help somebody or do something and all you have is a Windows machine and for some reason you may not be allowed to boot a Linux distribution on that machine. And, uh, and so I would do some videos on just like just getting certain things done because out of the box, Windows is for the most part useless. It's gotten slightly bit better in the last couple of years with PowerShell. PowerShell actually does do a lot of useful stuff. Uh, every time I've looked at it, this, the code is a mess. It's a lot bulkier, a lot more lines of code than I feel like should be needed. Uh, the commands are really long, but I guess a lot of them have abbreviations. But whenever you look up tutorials and examples, they give you the full version. So, like, if you want to download a file, it's like PowerShell dot uh, Internet Explorer dot Remote dot Download or something, something, something crazy like that. Instead of just like wget. Um, but go, let me go back to the question that the viewer asked. The question was. How do I get a Bash shell on my Windows machine? And I replied in the comment how to answer that. So I have in the past come across a single executable bash.exe, which you can get, and you just have that one executable. Problem with that is it's Bash, um, but that doesn't mean it has all the core tools. It has its Bash. So tools like grep and awk and, and dd and all these other tools may not be a, aren't going to be in that executable. So if you're going to use those, it's a bash shell, but not all the external tools aren't there. Um, and I'm not sure where to get that. I quickly Googled it when the person asked, and I couldn't find it. I did find a win-bash um, project, and it was a zip file, which had bash and an, all these executables for all these core tools. Uh, so that would be one option. I haven't tried that, but I would think you would just unzip that, uh, put it in a folder that's linked to your, sith, your, your, your path, your uh, syspath, whatever you call it, you know. Um, or just run it from that directory. And then you have bash and all those common tools. Uh, and I think the zip file when I downloaded it uh, was five megabytes. I didn't test it, I just downloaded it to see what was in the zip file. So that would be another option. Normally if I am at a Windows machine and I just need a halfway decent shell, uh, you can get, I think it's called Flippery or something like that, um, but BusyBox. I've talked about BusyBox a lot. I love BusyBox. It's on uh, most Linux devices if you have a router, or your phone, or your TV, BusyBox is in there. It's very easy to install on mo multiple Linux distributions. And it's a single binary um, file uh, that has so many tools built in. And it's usually like one and a half megabytes if you get the full thing and you can recompile it with less tools if you don't need them all. But it will have um, DD in it, it will have WGET in it, it will have NETCAT in it, it will have GREP and AUK. And some of them are slimmed down versions of it like the NETCAT or NC is not quite a full version of Netcat. There are a few features missing, but for the most part, there even has Vi built in, all in a 1.5 megabyte file. Now, when you, and on Windows, it even has an FTP server, uh, a Telnet server, and an HTTP uh, web server. Uh, I, the Windows binary, when I've downloaded it, are missing some of those uh, server functionalities, the, the, the FTP, the Telnet, and the, um, and the web server are missing. But for the most part, all those tools are there. So unlike that other Bash project where you have the Bash shell and you have all these external executables, which is fine, this is all in one binary. And uh, so you can call it, you know, um, busybox.exe and the command you want, or you can go busybox.exe uh, sh and it will start the shell for you and all those tools will be available there. You drop that one binary in your Windows Sys32 folder and it should you should be able to access it. But as I just said, it, that's not Bash. It's actually a shell or ash, I'm not really sure how you say it, which is very similar. And if you're just working at the shell there, you know, for the most part it's going to be there. And I don't really know the differences, but if you try to run a bash shell, first of all, you'd have to change the shebang line, just be sh. Um, but there might be some, some differences. Uh, some functionality might work a little different. Just I know like with z shell and bash, you know, I have z shell as my main shell, but I write my scripts in bash. And there are a few things, especially when it comes to like brace expansions and stuff, are different from bash to Z shell, and I'm sure, sure that Ash is the same way. So it's not quite Bash, but if you need a decent shell with a lot of your core GNU tools in there, that's a single binary. Just Google 
busybox.exe for Windows, and it'll be one of the first sites to come up, and it's called flippery.busybox or something like that, or dash busybox. Another option, uh, there are a couple of package managers for Windows. Um, a lot of them I have not tried, uh, because the few times that I've uh, needed this uh, I, is because I'm at my uh, machine at work, which is running Windows 7 with PowerShell 1, and a lot of these package managers need newer versions of PowerShell, and I'm not allowed to upgrade PowerShell on my machine, so I mean, I probably could, but I'm not supposed to. Um, but Chocolatey is the package manager that I've used, so it's, uh, is it Chocolatey or choc Chocolatey? Just, talk, just, just Google Chocolate Package Manager, and it should come up, and uh, you can easily uh, usually you need to have administrator access, but there, I think there is a way to install things locally. Uh, if you don't have administrator, so just put it inside, I guess, your, your documents folder or something like that. I'm not really sure, but it's just like one or two PowerShell commands, and it will install, and then you just type in chocolatey search or chocolatey install, and you can install packages. And I would assume, I didn't look, but I would assume that Bash is in there, but I know the GNU core tools are in there and BusyBox is in there. So you can just chocolatey install uh, GNU core tools or something. You know, chocolatey install... Busy box, and you can get a shell that way. I also know that um, uh, uh, Windows now has the iHeart Linux Linux subsystem for Windows. I haven't touched that. I don't know anything about that. I'm not really sure how that works. I'm assuming that's more than just a Bash shell. It's probably like a, a much larger package. And I'll try to answer the question of just Bash and trying to get it to as minimum, you know, one or a handful of files for you. Uh, but I guess that would be an option as well. Now, going back, why am I talking about this rather than showing you? Um, well, I was like, oh, you know, I guess I could do a tutorial on this. And I have, you know, gotten Windows running in virtual machines before. So I went to Microsoft allows you, uh, just you can Google search yourself, uh, Windows Virtual Box Images. And one of the first links will be from Microsoft, uh, developers.microsoft.com or something like that. And you can get... Uh, virtual machine images of Windows XP through Windows 10 uh, for different virtual machines, uh, VirtualBox being one of them, VMware being another, I think there's a couple others, and you can download that zip file, extract it, then import it into your virtual machine, and then you have, it's either 30, 60, or 90 days to use that image, and then it expires, and you either need to, you know, wind it back or go through that process again. So I went to do that, and Windows 10 was what the file I downloaded, and zipped as a zip file was a 16 gig file, almost 17 gigs, and it took forever to download. And then it took forever to extract all that. And then I went to import it into VirtualBox, and it's and it's like setting up the appliance, I think they call it, in VirtualBox. And it's like, this is going to take 26 minutes. I'm like, I, I've already spent like 45 minutes just downloading and extracting this file. It's nothing but bloatware. I just got fed up and said, forget this. And I was like, I literally could have gone to something like Linux Mint. Most Linux distributions, in my opinion these days, are overly bloated. When I first started using Linux, most of the images would fit on a CD. Then they got bigger to where you need a DVD, and they were just, you know, they were originally they were like 500 to 650 megabytes, and then they got closer to a gig. And to me, I mean, Linux comes with so many different tools, so it's really hard to rate. But once you start getting over a gig for an installer, uh, and again, a lot of these are live CDs. Anyway, I could go to linuxmint.com and download a current version of Linux Mint that's 1.8 gigabytes ISO, which I would I would consider ridiculous in size, but nothing compared to the 16 gigs or 17 gigs that Windows 10 was. I could download that, load that into a virtual machine, get it running as a, as, as a live CD or a live system, be doing stuff while it's installing to the virtual machine, and have that installation done and reboot probably before I could finish downloading the Windows 10 zip file, let alone extracting it and getting it set up in the virtual machine. And it's just... I consider most Linux distributions nowadays to be bloated, but they are nothing compared to Windows, which is just ridiculous. Um, and and the, Linux, the, the Windows thing uh, isn't going to have any Office suites, probably isn't going to have, I don't know, it might have a PDF reader in it. Uh, it isn't going to have any image manipulation thing beyond paintbrush, where at least this 1.8 ISO 
uh, image is going to have, you know, GIMP and LibreOffice. It's going to have a media player that's going to play all your media files and at least try to install the codecs if they aren't already installed. Uh, it, it's a completely usable system without having to install anything else where the Windows thing is just it's Windows. And Windows without installing third-party software is nothing. Uh, I mean, I guess you consider GIMP third-party. When I say third-party, I mean that doesn't come with it, that isn't provided by the maintainers of that distribution. Um, so that would be why I didn't do a tutorial on this, and I still might if I could sit down at a Windows machine that I can do, uh, you know, the, the demonstration on, do a screencast of. But, uh, but yeah, it is just, just getting, and, and then after I started all this, I'm like, you know what, I should do a video. I should do a video that, that would be two, two screenshots. One would be, you know, me downloading Linux Mint, getting it up and running and doing stuff with it while I'm downloading on this other screenshot, uh, downloading the Windows and downloading the Windows image, extracting the Windows, Windows image, setting up the Windows image. And like I said, I'd be able to do all this probably before this is done downloading. And I started to do that. I started to record that. And I got the whole Linux one down, down downloading Linux Mint, getting it going in a virtual box. I didn't do the install. I just got it booted. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to go record the Windows side of it. And I just realized this is going to be just a super long, boring video because it's going to take an hour and a half to get Windows set up. So it's like they're going to be going at the same time, download, Linux get loaded, and then the Win Linux Windows is just going to sit there while the Windows is downloading, extracting, installing. And I was going to title it something like Windows sucks before it's even installed, Linux versus Windows or something like that. You know, something, something that's going to, and then I'm just going to get a whole bunch of mean comments from Windows users who don't know what they're doing but will defend Windows to the end. But, um, but yeah, Windows sucks before it's even installed. So there you go. If you have problems with that, comment below because it does suck and is completely useless out of the box. PowerShell is a little bit more helpful, can do a couple of things. But before PowerShell, you had Visual Basic Script and Batch Files. <laughs> that was about it to do anything useful without having to install something like Python or, or some sort of C compiler. But thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.